Let's take a walk through some coop and run setups today and discuss some of the pros and cons with each to help you decide on what will work best for you. Now what works best for you and your block will be different to someone in a different part of the country with different breeds of hen and different motives behind keeping them. These are some things you'd never even thought of. Let's walk through an orchard, a woodland, an open air system, all with their coops of course, and a mandala garden. The first setup we'll look at is nestled amongst this orchard. Chooks do really well in orchards. They will forage on fallen fruit and they help keep orchard pests at bay as well in your fruit. So chickens have actually evolved on the forest floor and they do feel safest under the canopy of trees. So as you can see, these fences have not needed to be heightened and the birds do not have their wings clipped because they are happiest with access to trees anyway. So psychological welfare, well taken care of here. For four hens, we generally say a minimum of two by two meters for the sized coop. We actually have a rooster in this group of three and a rooster does need the space of two hens. So this is a good sized coop for this little flock of three. We say one nesting box per three hens and we've got one each in here. So plenty of space and nice easy access from the outside for the owners, which is a must have for any coop just for cleaning. Perches are about five centimetres wide with rounded off squared edges and with well more than their required 15 centimetres of space each per chook. So again, looking really good here. You'll notice they are the perfect height at a recommended 40 to 50 centimetres off the ground. The stepwise fashion that they've got here is a great idea as well, especially if you have big heavy meat breeds in the mix who tend to land pretty hard coming off the roost. That 40 to 50 centimetres high allows one nice flap with those stabilising secondary flight feathers in the wings and a pretty gentle landing. You'll notice we do have some pretty well designed ventilation up here with shields to prevent rain streaming in and rotting the bedding. Do just be sure to keep these grills cleaned to promote good airflow. But ventilation is all about removing the hot air from up high, allowing fresh air in but without becoming drafty. Now we should note on this setup that they are using straw for bedding. Straw is fine, it's not absorbent, so you do need to be sure to clean it out frequently. But compared to say hay, straw is definitely the preferred option to hay. Hay is younger grass when it's cut, so it remains damp. It basically rots or grows mold when it remains damp. As they say, hay is to eat, straw is to sleep on. So the ideal bedding would be untreated shavings. They're soft, they're very absorbent, but straw in this case, absolutely fine. Our big swinging door here lets us get all the way in for a good clean and there's also a nifty sort of pull out tray down here for a full clean off the floor. These pull out trays tend to work a little bit better with lighter coops rather than the bigger heavy ones. You can see this tray is a bit heavy. Now our little entrance here is great as well. It's elevated off the ground so you have to have a ramp to the entrance and our ramp is equipped with horizontal slats for grips, so all good things. The only feature that you could include here would be a little sliding door so that you can close it during particularly bad weather or to protect from predators if you're in a risky area. Now my big critique with this coop, and to be fair it's super super common, is that it's an old heavy timber with lots of cracks and splinters in the wood. So the poultry red mite will thrive in this coop and right at the start of the season we are here just starting to warm up and it didn't take me longer than a few seconds to find red mites lingering about waiting for the hens to perch so they could climb on and drink their blood at night time. Jump over to our episode on prevention and treatment of poultry red mites to learn more here but basically this coop is going to need to be to be frank either burned and start fresh or some serious upkeep involved which will involve siliconing all the gaps and painting the interior to get this red mite burden under control. Too many cracks and crevices for them to hide guys with an old heavy wooden coop like this. In fact we actually have a broody girl here who recently got off the nest after a three week sit and is looking a bit worse for wear from red mite anemia, blood boss. And we also have evidence here of the hens not wanting to go into the coop at night. This is another thing you'll see with red mite infestations. They'd rather sleep in the trees because they just don't want to go inside and be bitten all night by red mites. So all in all, a beautiful setting, a great coop design, happy hens by day. Just those filthy red mites need to always be considered when designing a coop. 
Get a coop designed to prevent red mites right from the get-go, especially in the warmer parts of New Zealand where they're a big problem and they are getting worse every year. Now this next setup, the woodland setup I'll call it, is my favourite. There is just so much to admire here and it's working really, really well. Set amongst the undergrowth, this is a very natural habitat for chickens. The smallish area means the ground does become reasonably barren from the chooks scratching around, but greenery and mulch added every day keeps them entertained from that perspective and they're clearly very, very happy hens indeed. Again, to leave this enclosure would mean going from woodland to open space, so they just don't do it. They stay where they want to be. And aside from a small patch facing the house where their food source comes from, they make no effort to get out and no one needs their wings clipped. Before we head into the coop, check out this awesome waterer. It catches the rainwater off the roof, runs it into a large plastic drum with nipple waterers. Now you just buy these little nipple waterers online or at rural supply stores super easy keeps things fresh and clean a word of warning here guys please don't be catching rainwater if you have a coop with old lead paint we do see lead toxicity in birds drinking lead contaminated water catching rainwater can be a real pain in a woodland setting with leaves clogging the gutters this setup shows a nice protective catcher to prevent leaves accumulating which is great we also have an automatic feeder here. This is a weight triggered feeder which helps to keep wild birds out. These don't always work perfectly because wild birds are smart, but it does help. You'll see we've got extra soluble grit here as well in the form of oyster shell for additional calcium should they need it. Laying hens should always have additional soluble grit on offer. They tend to magically supplement themselves if they feel the extra need of calcium and it's really important that it's not mixed in with their main diet. It does need to sit separately so that they have the option of whether to consume additional calcium or not. A separate little bowl altogether in here would make me feel more comfortable, but realistically, this is probably fine. Cleaning products and supplements sitting on the outside here and an additional lean-to has been built which they spend plenty of time hanging out on, as you can see. The owner tells me that in the wet weather, they do really want to get out of the rain, but they don't always just want to hang out in the coop for days on end. I'm sure we all know that feeling. So different options for shelter work really well. So let's head inside the coop now. Easy access nesting boxes, a must, and this made me laugh a little. Two of the most cliche broody breeds, an Orpington and a little Bantam hogging the nesting boxes. Two boxes between six hens. This fits into the recommendations of one box to three or four hens. Of course, if somebody goes broody, we need to make sure that the other girls have somewhere to go. Lots of ventilation in this coop, but a bit of a smaller, higher grill to give a wee bit more protection would certainly be ideal. Try and keep those open grills above where the girls are roosting at night. You'll have to be prepared to get out ASAP to replace the bedding after a storm. So somewhere where it's a lot colder and they need more insulation, this just won't work. Perches, five centimetres wide, rounded edges, perfect. They're slightly high off the ground, so we should aim for 40 to 50 centimetres for a nice soft landing. Otherwise, implement the stepwise fashioned perches. But because she has predominantly light breeds in this group and deep, soft bedding beneath that they're going to land on, she's going to get away with that just fine. If you had heavy meat breeds and a rough substrate underneath, you might find yourself running into keel injuries and bumblefoot issues. Bedding wise, we've gone with hay here, which is a greener substrate than straw, not absorbent like shavings. So left wet, it is certainly the worst bedding in terms of harboring mold and infection. Okay, let's get to the really cool stuff I wanna show you with this setup. Up in the heat of North Auckland, we deal a lot with these poultry red mites. Now check out these preventative measures. We have a wooden coop, but it's made of smooth plywood for the most part, so not the deep splintered heavy wood crevices and cracks that the old heavy wood comes with. So not so many places to hide for the red mites. This owner also smears thick Vaseline in a full 180 around each end of the perch. So that should red mites take hold, they will struggle to actually climb around the perch to reach the hens at night. And then she's making good use of a wormwood plant as well. The oil in wormwood plants contains a neurotoxin called artemisinin, which causes convulsions and death and repels insects, including mites and other external parasites. But it can also be toxic to the hens. 
So really important to use the leaves with caution. So don't let the hens confuse them with food in any way. These leaves should not go anywhere near the foraging food pile, for example. So this client has it wrapped around the ends of each of the perches. She has it in the nesting boxes and a living plant at the front door, which forces every chicken to brush up against it every time she comes in and out, which I love. These birds have apparently never been treated for external parasites. And yes, I did check, but cannot find any red mites in the coop, nor parasites on the birds themselves. So something certainly going right with the setup. Okay, now this third environment is very common on farms and blocks, and I'm gonna call it the open air system. Just having them roam through paddocks. It's certainly the picture you see on every free range egg carton ever, isn't it? Pros with this system is these hens have a lot of space. Your gut worms are going to be very low in these birds because they have so much room to roam. So burdens on the pasture are gonna be really small. You can also use this to your advantage by rotating the chooks through paddocks behind stock where the chooks scratch up all the dung piles, dispersing it around, killing the stock's gut worm larvae and helping to fertilize the pasture with all the ammonia from their really rich excrement from their feces. So from that perspective, really handy. From a psychological welfare perspective of the hens, it's not ideal. The open air, as we've explained, is a very vulnerable place for chickens to be. Their stress levels will be a bit higher. They much prefer to be under tree cover and amongst the foliage. So unlike the orchard and woodland, these chooks do all have their wings clipped because they do try and leave the area otherwise. Okay. A quick mention here of the water source. Troughs are fine, but if you're going to allow access to a large trough, if you've got one in the environment with water in it, please do make sure that you place some stepped bricks or rocks in the bottom so that birds that fall in can get back out again. Drownings are not uncommon, and this actually is an example where the owner has had birds drown in the past. Moving over to the coop, very cool access system. I love these funky DIY latches to keep the doors up. Storage area for cleaning products and all the rest. You will notice that the perches are lower than the nesting boxes, however, and this results in the chooks all sleeping up high on the ramp and in the boxes. They will always seek the highest point to sleep. So a handy example to see here. We do have enough nesting boxes at one box to four hens, so that's good. It's made of nice flat ply, so while red mites will certainly still infest a wooden coop like this, there's less hiding places and it's a little easier for you to clean. We could certainly use some ventilation to the nesting boxes in this setup. We have quite a small door entrance, which is fine, but no ventilation on the inside. So it's gonna get really dusty and stagnant in here, predisposing the birds to respiratory issues, especially if anyone goes broody and spends a long period of time in these boxes. And finally, we have the mandala garden using a chicken dome. Now you may or may not have seen these around. They are used in permaculture as a means of sustainable gardening. The system works by moving the dome around consecutive circular gardens in a sundial sort of fashion, leaving them in each spot for usually a couple of weeks or so to eat down the foliage, turn over the soil and pretty intensely fertilize it before you come in and re-sow again behind them. So less labor for the gardener and just makes for a really fertile garden. This particular garden has, I believe, eight peripheral stations with a central station as well. And at the end of those 16 weeks or so, the chooks free range the property for a time before they need it again. Now, obviously there are cons here with a lack of space and shelter, but psychologically speaking, in terms of space, these hens are actually gonna be very fulfilled and enriched. Greenery is added to their dome daily, and they're very well entertained foraging and scratching among the foliage. They also have a single rooster in the group, which dramatically decreases any squabbling between hens. Roosters are really worth their weight in gold at keeping the peace. Shelter is probably the biggest concern for this owner, certainly. They have a tarpaulin sheltering the dome, and that's what you normally see with these domes. If you wanted to up the ante on that, some people will use tarps that can actually roll up and down on different sides. We should have somewhere that they can be shifted to shelter during particularly harsh weather, rain and wind, and even during heat waves because they won't have the ability to find their own microclimates in a small enclosure. They're really forced to stay there. These domes can work really well and involve a lot less micromanagement in less windy, more sheltered areas. 
Now the roost here is worth noting, it's quite a cool setup. Protected from nocturnal predators of course, like mustard lids, because it hangs. So very cool design there. There is obviously no bedding to change, just the Al Natural floor, which is of course impossible to decontaminate and disinfect should you need to. But so long as they are otherwise protected from predators that may borrow in, and so long as they're shifted should it get wet, you can get away with dirt floors. It's when things get wet with built up faeces harbouring infection, that's when things get out of hand. As such, this system is of course not appropriate for all climates and environments. Now just noted here, these hens did used to have a nesting box on offer that got shifted along with the dome, but given the natural foliage, it is only fair that they preferred to make their own. Now you might think red mites wouldn't be a problem here. This setup has experienced red mites in the rope perches before, but it is easily kept under control and eliminated each summer. An automatic feeder is used when free ranging to protect from wild birds. Of course, under the dome, there's not an issue with wild birds, so fresh water, pellets and fresh foliage is given daily. All in all, very happy hens, your biggest concern with this will be managing the shelter element if the environment is at all harsh. And perhaps with younger birds under a year old, moving over a smaller space like this could elevate their internal parasites. Okay guys, hopefully that's given you a lot to work with or at least some funky ideas there. Go forth and conquer.